Media no longer are part of our culture. Media are our culture. We are now media citizens, all of us. There are still many people who think that if I can retrieve a website or I can make a video and disseminate it, I'm media literate. Media coaches are crucial in our, in our lives, especially in schools. There has never been more need for media literacy. This is a replication of, of a good practice that uh, the partnership uh, got from the Netherlands, which is a country with high levels of media literacy. The Dutch, uh, well, they offered us a model very strongly proven by practice. It was uh, a fantastic opportunity. Yeah, in the, in the Netherlands, we started with the first training in 2007. And I remember that we said to each other, if we have 10 people interested, we will do the first training. But then for the first training, we had a waiting list of 85 people. So what it is that we're doing is that we're transferring this award-winning best practice in five countries that have been identified by surveys as having low levels of media literacy. In this European Media Coach project, we now help Portugal, Cyprus, Greece, Romania and Bulgaria to also put together a Media Coach training so that they can improve media literacy levels of children and parents in their countries as well. And our goal is training 100 individuals in each partner country, the individuals working with youth. So they would be teachers, youth workers, etc. And this individuals will then educate others on media literacy, thus creating a media coach chain, if you like. It's up to the experts in these countries themselves to take our knowledge and our experiences and to adapt that to their local situation. We followed the guidelines of Dutch partners, the guidelines of project management. We asked about the environmental assessment, which was, you know, crucial start. Indeed, the environmental assessment is the first step. And as we said, we cannot highlight enough the importance of the environmental assessment. The Netherlands is a very different context than Cyprus, for example. So it's actually very important to know your national context. Uh, for example, how, uh, how good is internet access in your country? How frequently does the population use the internet? Are there any digital divides? What are these? There is no point in offering something that your context does not need or is not able to receive. Bulgaria is a small territory. It's like... Uh less than 7 million. In all schools in the country, there is strong internet. But the thing is that teachers, a great majority of them, would not use digital instruments for learning purposes, just because they themselves are not from the digital generation. One of the surveys we used showed very clearly that when Bulgarian kids go to school at the age of seven, before they're able to write and read, they have already accessed internet. So the thing was uh, to supply their teachers with the proper attitude to include uh, aspects of media literacy in what they teach. In Cyprus, sexualization online was a very big issue. In a country like Romania, for example, there was a lot of interest in uh, issues of democracy. After that, the trainers need to be trained by the original source of the project, and that's the Dutch partners. We all went to the training in uh, Almere in the Netherlands. We had the training of trainers to be able to use that model in the best possible way. We were all advised on how we could um, bring this methodology to our countries. Subsequently, we had to develop our own material. We adapted 10 modules each. You've got to know your context and then you need to adapt your content. The workload was shared, everybody said uh, what uh, topic of the course content will work on. We set deadlines and we had uh, the first uh, draft of the program. We made some changes. In between, we were having on a monthly basis one or two meetings among the project partners. So at some point, we had a program, we had the topics, we had the packages, uh, dossiers, and we had to test it. So we tested in three faculties with current students. 
We have prepared questionnaires asking simple questions like what do you understand by media literacy, what tools you use, what are your expectations. The majority, and when I say majority, like two-thirds of the respondents said that they liked it incredibly, it was incredibly useful. And then we started the implementation phase, which was the delivering of these seminars. We, of course, collected feedback from the participants after each cycle of training was completed. Uh, Offering a refresher course at the end of uh, the training is also a step that is included in the implementation. But our plan is also to continue to offer these refresher courses on an annual basis. This will, of course, give life to the project after the funding. To attract participants. Um, because, as I said, in some cases, your target group may have many options. So you really need to differentiate yourself from other trainings. So, for example, in Cyprus, because we were dealing with mainly public school teachers, they have an abundance of uh, opportunities to do trainings. A problematic issue was uh, the very understanding of media literacy per se, because uh, even now there are lots of people according to which media literacy is just a set of skills. It is not only that. You also can regard it as a specific educational approach based on critical thinking. So I think by far the greatest challenge was the pandemic. I suppose that is a challenge for everyone. (laughs) I'm very proud to say that the partners overcame this challenge really well. We moved quickly enough developing our material online. We put in the extra hours to just simply transfer everything online and to train ourselves to offer this. With COVID, media coaches are no longer accepted in schools. True. And sometimes schools are even closed down. Everything is now online. All of a sudden, schools were closed, universities were closed, and there was no other way of conducting classes, but by using digital instruments. If something saved Bulgarian education to the extent it was saved, those were the digital instruments. You really need to be able to adapt to circumstances. A lesson learned from the pandemic and from implementing such projects during the pandemic is to just be prepared, have alternatives, to have other solutions. And in our case, If you're promoting media literacy and you're talking about digital media, use digital media in order to do your trainings. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Um, In terms of uh, numbers, in terms of programs, and uh, more importantly, in terms of sustainability, because we will continue with it. I believe we did reach our goals and our goal, as I said, was to to train a hundred individuals in each country. And in fact, some of our partners were able to train even more, which is a great success. It means that there is great interest in media literacy. And we have already had invitations to follow up our trainings and to visit schools and offer seminars. Uh, Less than one year after the project start, simply things coincided. Um, school curricula from 1st to 12th grade or to 11th grade included aspects of media literacy. We also succeeded to organize an umbrella organization called Bulgarian Media Literacy Coalition. This whole project was uh, an unexpectedly happy experience, to be honest. I greatly enjoyed it as coordinator. Uh, it was wonderful to work with uh, these people from uh, different partner countries. You have a team of co-thinkers and we understand each other just from a single word. It was fantastic. Overall, I consider it an extremely valuable learning experience. In terms of future, I'm very, very positive. The momentum is right for us to promote media literacy policies. So if you're asking me what I want to see in the future, Definitely, the goal is to see policies promoting media literacy, especially uh, in the public school curriculum. I would like to see one media coach in every school, at least one. A group of media coaches trained in your country, 
uh, that could be the kind of, uh, how do you say that, the kind of starters. If you train, let's say, 10 media coaches in a country, who will train other people to be a media coach? Who will be able to train? It's a kind of viral thinking. I strongly believe in this. What we need is media literacy now.